Hello, everybody. Hi, Linda. Hi, how are you? I'm really w good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You're doing good. Well, we are here because Linda is teaching us another workshop, which we are so excited about. Linda, what are you going to be explaining here in this video today? Basically, uh, the difference in mohair, uh, the different types, and how to make a mohair wig. And after this, you'll appreciate purchasing a mohair wig. You will. See, I love a great wig. We purchase them sometimes for hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. for, for a wig, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And mohair is a very lush um, natural fiber to work with. And it's what we use a lot in making wigs. Human hair seems to be a little harder to make. And you can make human hair, but you'll make it just like this, with just like we're going to use the mohair. But so just like with doll making, wig making is a huge part of the process. And there's resources where you can learn more through the Doll Artisan Guild. This is, mm -hmm. this is a intro, but I'm excited to learn. And Linda has been making wigs for for a long time. It's been a while since you've made one, but we're sure gonna, has. yeah, but she's been doing, she's been brushing up on her skills and we're, we're gonna, we're gonna enjoy this. Okay. So Linda, take us away. Okay. Well, welcome. And, um, uh, first of all, you need to understand the difference in mohair. You purchase mohair either by a half a yard and this is wefted. Wefted means it's been stitched together. Now, if you look real carefully, you can see where it's been folded over and it's been machine stitched. This would be under the underneath side where you aren't going to see it. So, this is exactly one yard of mohair. It comes in different colors and when you order it, you order it by the color and by yardage. This happens to be, the length happens to be considered short. Then there's medium and long. Long is getting very hard to get now because of the supply. This comes from a very rare goat that a lot of people, un, you have to blanket these animals because, and when you get this mohair, yes, it's expensive, but understand there is no debris in this. And anybody that understands animals understands there will be debris coming from the pasture because they eat. This is like a red auburn and this is a dark brown. This is considered roving. It is twisted together. It also comes in yardage. This is very fine, but when you use this, you can't, it's like a rope. You can't tear it and you do not want to cut it because it's blunt. So you have to separate your hands and then you pull. Because if I cut it, let me show you, it becomes very blunt and it will not straighten up. You can't fix it after that. Even if I took thinning shears, it would be hard. But I could if I spent enough time doing it. It's just better to always, with this, pull your hands apart. Now the question is gonna be, can I make this roving out of this? Yes, you can. And you'll see how we're gonna use stitch later on the machine. But it's going to, it takes a lot of time. So if you want to spend that kind of time, have, have, have fun. The next thing, you're going to need some basic supplies. You can use straws, all different sizes of straws. You definitely need cling wrap or an old grocery sack. You can use Mod Podge or starch. You can use a regular linen or any kind of heavy fabric. If you do not have what I'm going to use today, it's called wet, wet and shape. And you'll, it already has um, stiffening in it. So when I wet it, it's going to form and make my wig. 
You'll need a tape measure. I use a trash sack to cover the doll when I'm working. Needles. Definitely thread to match the color of wig you're going to be working with. These are just clips that I'm going to use to help clip her draping. Later on we're going to use tissue paper for the sewing. Regular craft scissors, rubber bands, an assortment here. Horse scissors. Then here is a supply kit that you can buy from Dolls Parts. It has the basic supplies you need for everything. You have an assortment of all the different combs. You can get this wonderful curling iron. I use it here at the shop. It has the perm ro rods. It has a little spray bottle. And she's included all of the papers, pins, and clips. This all comes together, or you can just buy the curling iron. We're gonna demonstrate how to use the perm rods and the curling iron and the different effect it, it gives you at the end result. So the first thing, as you can see, I just want my doll secure. And this is the easiest way for me to do it. Is I just find a stand. Yes, she's dangling. Now, I'm going to take my tape measure, and you measure from ear to ear. Let's say it's about eight. I'm going to add at least a half an inch. So I'm going to cut a nine one way. Then you go, okay, this is the front of a wig cap or the front of your hairline. And you'll go to the back where the back of your hairline ends. It's an eight. So if you added a half an inch, you would have a nine by nine square. I just took a piece of this off. This is just water in a spray bottle. You can dip it at home. What I do is usually dip it under the faucet, but I'm just going to go like this and get it really wet. It becomes very sticky. I can't stress. And the wetter it gets, the stickier. I want it about a half an inch longer than where the front of her wig's gonna be. Make sure it's over. There's her ear. The other ear. And the back of her head. It also stretches. If you notice, I'm stretching it. If I have any wrinkles in the wig cap, I want them in the back of the wig. Here again, we need another rubber band. I don't like that one. Let's see if we can use this one. Let me 
starts to go up a little. sure this stays down likes to creep up you want to make sure this is real important that we get this wig cap right if the wig cap doesn't fit their wigs not gonna fit and of course we're having issues today Now I'm going to, like I said, it's very sticky. You can see that mohair is even sticking to my hands. I'm going to push this up very carefully. Okay. You need at least something under here, like a half an inch, a fourth of an inch, so we can turn it up because that will strengthen the edge of your wig. Okay. There she goes. What happened? Rubber band busted. Okay. Start over. It's not a big deal. positioning. Okay. Pops up. Now I could take a hair dryer and I can dry it or I can let it air dry. But I have plenty of things to do right now and let it air dry. And if I'm in a real hurry, I guess I could use the hair dryer, but I probably won't because it's gonna take me a while to do the next step. I'm gonna wipe my hands. And I forgot to drape my doll. So. Just cut a little hole. So while this is drying, we're going to prepare our mohair. This is approximately, this is the 13 inch wig and it's, I'm estimating it's going to take a yard and a half. Now this was one yard and I needed an extra amount. so. I had this left over from another wig, so this is going to be our part that we're going to use later. But if you want a smaller head, you would probably you could get away with a half a yard, maybe a three quarters of a yard. Remember what we said about the wrong side? It comes these little hairs. 
Let's see if I can get them up. So you can really see them. It's the fold over. Right there. So what I'm going to do is I've already combed this. And we want to comb it very good. I mean, there's no lint or anything in this. But I like to, what you've got to do is hold this. And you're going to comb the mohair out. By doing this, it's going to help you style your wig later. Do not throw this stuff away. It's called a rat. Pull it up. Word to the wise, do not wear sweaters or anything sticky because this mohair will get all over you and it will be, you'll look like a furry bear. You can see there's little knots in there just like children's long hair. And I'm holding this because if I don't hold it, it will literally pull out. There are some, if you would want your mohair to be shorter, or if some people do this anyway, you can take the mohair and make it shorter. Okay. By holding this and pulling. And it literally will short, it's pulling it through the stitching and it will shorten your mohair. So if you have a little teeny doll, rather than cutting it, you can have, use less mohair by doing that. So you've got to main, get all of this ready while this is drying. And what are we going to do with this wrap? Well, we're going to show you as soon as our wig cap dries. Okay, our wig cap is dry, so we're going to go ahead and remove it. It's very stiff, you can see. Now all I have to do is pull the saran wrap off. Now I'm going to put it back on. Now, you would think that it would be really super tight, but you can see it sort of gives. I'm going to mark it with an ink pen. What we're going to do is we're going to take a gathering stitch or a stitch and go right around the edge here all the way around. I'm going to mark the front, but I'm also going to mark it on the inside too. You will see later because you will not know which one is the front and what is the back. You can see right here, it's, it's sort of buckled a little bit, so when I stitch I'm going to use double thread and a needle and hand stitch this in a gather. If there's any tucks at this point, you can see this is a tuck and here's a tuck. I'm going to go back and I'm going to stitch that. So anywhere where there's a little pleat, I'm going to do an overcast right here. There's like a little tuck. By marking them extra long, because I'm going to trim right here. 
I'm just going to trim some of it. But I'm going to go back. I'm not going to have you watch me do all of this. And I will show you. Okay, this stuck. That's how sticky this wet and shape is. Okay, I'm cutting off my F, so I need to put it on again. Have the front. So let's do our planning. I would like to do a doll with a center part. So the center part would be right there. And it's going to go back, I need to make it straight, to about right where your hair separates right there. That's your, I call it my top knot. So that's where the center part is. That's very important because you have to plan how you want your wig. Then the next row, this will be the first row. This will make more sense when I start. This will be the second row. something like that. What I will probably do is turn this wrong side out so you can really see. And there it is. Trace. And the second row, you stop at the center part. There's a reason for it. Okay, and then can I see through? Yeah. Double thread. Yeah. Pinch knot. Now the front is here, so I want to start in the back because I want to pull and hopefully. We're 
almost there. to the back. You do not have to be a fantastic stitcher. See there's this gap. Tightening it up. I'm sorry. Make sure it stays snug. It's already been knotted. Very good knot though. So there's your front. There's some stitches right here. I'm gonna have to overcast these little pleats. So I'm gonna stitch them and make sure that they are down and going to stay. Reinforced. Like I said, it's not pretty stitching either. Here's a little pleat. Here's two pleats. Just to reinforce it so it doesn't give. Recheck. Pretty nice fit. The next thing, remember I said we aren't throwing our rats away because they're important. A lot of people use the rats even if they have extra for many, many different things. So pieces of mohair are valuable and I put them in little bags and I have them in separate colors and a lot of times it will be just enough for a small fairy wig or a little albis wig so here's our rat just like they did in the olden days they had rats under their hair now, there are people, wig makers out there, that do not do this. I personally like doing this because 
then I'm not using so much mohair and wefted mohair. And I, I, my preference on a wig is not to have too much hair. So it's really easy when you're stitching mohair. Oh, one more round, one more row won't hurt. Well, then when you get all of this hair and you're trying to style it, then all you're doing is pulling it out and trying to get it thin. So I've sort of got it placed in. And all I'm gonna do, literally, is to a big, huge basting stitch to hold it in place. Some people like um, dyeing or tea dyeing or coffee dyeing their fabric. Now, if you do not have wet and shape, you can use this fabric, something like this. Dip it in a solution of Mod Podge, which you can get at a craft store. Even, I've seen it at, at Walmart even. Thin it down, dip it just like starch, and do the same exact process. If you do not do this, Sometimes you'll see the wig cap. If you'll notice your wig caps that you have on your dolls, some of them might have black, black um, fabrics or netting. It's made, they're made out of many different things. I mean, it's, there's, no, there's no real right and wrong. It's what you like and what you have available. I'd probably get a little bit more rat right here and put it here. But I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to knot it. And I'm going to demonstrate how we stitch it on. And then I'm going to break and then I'm going to come back after it's all stitched on. But I'm going to show you, remember how we did our planning? Here's our part, and here's the first row, second row, and third row. What I'm going to do is each time I get to the part, I'm going to stop about a half an inch away from the part. There's a reason for that. I wouldn't go over the part because it's going to be a big lump on your part. We don't want par lumpy parts, okay? Like I said, I had time. I put more wrap. You can also spread this out like that. I've got to find the wrong side and the right side. This is the wrong side. For this wig, it's not an upswept wig. I'm going to put the wrong side against the doll's face. And here's the front. I'm going to start at the back. I'm going to start this way. It's my preference. And not right smack in the back, somewhere along there, because you're going to Pull it up. Sometimes I go ahead and pin it just to hold it for the until I get started. Now, I have gone around, remember the circles that I did? I know I have enough mohair because I did the circles and I estimated and I wanted to make sure I had enough before I started this. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I thought it was being prepared.
it is an overcast stitch and I'm going to start underneath I'm going to come up and I'm going over the stitching see there's three rows of stitching there and I'm going to pull it up and whip it and tighten it I'm going there's the third row and I'm going can go like so pull this down okay. when I get all the way around I'm going to overlap just a little bit. In other words, I'm going to bring the end just above there so there's no gap. And this will be stitched. The next row, I will start at the part. Remember, we had a part. So right in the center, I'm going to start at the part and I will start right here and I will go around, no, I'll start right here in the front and if you look real carefully, you can see right here, about a half an inch away from the center part and then I'm going to go around on that line and stop, knot it down. Then the next one will be the same thing right here. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to follow these lines. To review, this is the, the front. So I will start here, about a half an inch, go around, stitching. But on the mohair on this, the right side, start here and go around, cut it, and break it. That's what we're going to do, and then we're going to discuss how we make the part and style the wig. Hi there. Okay, we are back, and we have, I have gone ahead and sewn, like we discussed on the wig cap, and let's see, where is her face? Nope, oh, that's the back of her head. That's what I thought. Okay. What I helped myself with, see these colored pins right here and right here? And there was, there's one more right there. That's where the top knot is. Let me pull it out. I marked where the center part was going to be. So you can see that when I stitched it, I stopped. And you'll understand that a little bit better in a few minutes. But there's her face. This, is, this will be her bangs. But I think what we're going to do is we'll probably pull it this way. That way she can have bows or whatever. But this could be her bangs. Let's go ahead and take this off so you can see. This is what it looks like. It's not real pretty. But I have the straight pins right here on the outside so I could see where to stop. I stitched around. Here's another stitching line in here. So let's put it back on her. You can see it really does fit. I mean, I wouldn't have to. All I'm going to be able to do is I can do, um, you could use, well, I prefer to use masking tape. 
to put their wigs on because it's not so messy. But now we have to do the center part. How do we do the center part? Well, there's your top knot. Remember I saved and there's the wrong side and the right side. So I want to make sure if anything, I put the wrong the right sides together. So this is the wrong side. There's there's the fuzzies, okay? I want to this is the end of her wig cap. I want to go at least a half an inch longer. So here, go down the center to the top knot, right there. I'm going to double it, just so we have a visual. We're going to do it this way. Make sure I've got it right. Yeah. Okay. This is just our regular sewing machine. And a lot of people use different things. I prefer tissue paper. And I prefer it double. I just started. Now, I'm going to Remember, it's right sides together. Pushed it in, press your foot down. Even it up. Well, that was good. I'm not wearing my sewing glasses. Let's see if I can get it threaded. Hold it to the back so it doesn't wiggle on you. What it looks like on the back. Hold it. There's lots of products out there, tear away, and but it's just I always have tissue paper, so I use what I have. Hold it. 
so you don't. That's the only time you need the sew machine. Now, there is one spot, and I want you to look at it. This can happen because it slid on me right there. So back to the drawing board. We're okay. We're apart. going to do is we're going to press it. And this is probably, as far as I'm concerned, one of the tedious parts that I, you know, it's hard to You're trying to get this pressed down flat, open it up, just like that. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm flattening it with my fingers first. And if you have problems, you could do this. And I'm not putting my iron on there, but I am steaming it. Careful, you can burn your fingers when you're doing that. When you tr cut your mohair on this wefting, always go in like so. Snip it, hold both sides, and pull. Now remember we talked about the front of her face. 
it goes down a little bit. Well, and I want the part straight. Basically, I'm pinning through the wig cap. This is when it's nice to have tools. Now some people take a little bit of hair from this side and go over this, the seam or the center part, like this. But I'm not going to, we're just gonna go ahead. Now what I'm going to do is take it off and I'm gonna do what they call a stab stitch and I'm going to stitch up and down in this, on this part. I'm going to start right here. Separate your, the hairs. This will take some time. Lot it there. We're going to go back up. And down. Careful not to get this other hair. Okay. We will continue that till we get here. Then I will knot it, and then what I'm going to do, this one's already threaded, I'm going to take, remember we had this part right here? We're going to turn it underneath the wig cap and stitch it under. But we're going to have to be very careful because of this hair right here. So we're going to separate it. Turn it under. 
and stitch it. Like so. This will be secure and then we're going to finish the part and then we will start combing it and styling it. Okay, we have our part stitched in or down and what you would want to do now is I take and when you comb your hair just like any time you're combing mohair you hold on to it and help secure it or stabilize it. And we're basically making sure all it's there's no knots. And if we get some mohair out, oh well, that's, that's part of the process. There's two ways to style this. If you have time, if I'm home and if I am, or if my students are going to a um, competition or something, we usually style it with perm rods. And you can do that. And I have pinned this down through the wig cap, the big pin, so it, it helps secure it. But you can see this is where her bangs would be. Now at this time, we could go ahead and my savior to the scissors is the thinning shears. Now just like our hair, do not cut it too short because we're gonna wet this and curl it and it's gonna go up. But you do not want the hair over. I'm trying to get this so you can see. We're going to just shorten it. I like going up at an angle so it's not blunt. That helps me get some definition of where her bangs are. Now, we can talk. These are perm curlers. You can get them at a beauty supply place or I have some that I inherited from when I was younger and I had to always have it permanent before I went to school. Some of us remember those days. But just like when I'm using the curling iron, I separate the hair and I prefer this rat tail comb. Now, I did not use the thinning shears around the bottom because it was pretty even. But if this was not even, I would have gone ahead and trimmed it. This little spritz bottle has got water and white vinegar, a little bit of white vinegar. It helps set the curls. Pull this down so there's no open ends. Should have opened these. You curl toward the face. Bring it back and hook it up. See, it's tight. About the same distance. How big a roller? There's all different sizes depending on, remember, the proportions of your doll. And I can show you. 
right there is a little loose. So. Get it thoroughly wet. This, what it takes longer. It's best if it sits overnight and dries naturally. But it will dry very tight. Now this isn't as tight, so I'm going to take it out. These come apart, these newer ones. Just put them back. Back in the slot. Pull it over and up there. We're going to do it a couple more. Now, my suggestion to everybody, and we do, I do it all the time when I'm doing a doll. I will do this once, I will style it, I will take it out, the perm rods, look at it, critique it, remember how I did it, and change anything I do not like, trim any hairs that are sort of giving us fits and do it again. If I'm traveling with a doll, usually I travel with the perm rods in it. The wig, I take, remove it, and I put it in a box separate from the doll. So it doesn't get messed up. And style it when I get to where I need to be. Now I would continue that Curls always go usually towards the face until you get to the center back. Then I would turn and rotate, you know, the curls would be going towards the face here. Now we're going to, I'm going to, I picked littler rods just to show you. Make sure that when you first put it around, they don't flip back because then that's when you go th get those little uh, uneven little wispies that you want to cut off. And sometimes it's not really that good to cut cut your mo here. Rick, okay. So I would do maybe two here because when I take these out. I can always trim them to the length that I want and restyle them. Okay, it's flat. She would look like that. Or I took a wig and I styled it. It's smaller. You can see the perm rods. These are the older ones that we had years ago. And I'm going to take them out and show you just how tight 
everything gets. Take your comb too. Try not to disturb them until you see what you want to do with the curls. See my fancy wig stand but then all I have to do is separate these curls or pick them out when I put it on the doll and it will soften up her hair completely these curls will stay and a lot of people if they want the sausage curls will take like this and then put a bobby pin on the back side to hold them for years we get a lot of them that way if they look a little messed up all you have to do is comb them out like this Go like that that is one way or This comes with the kit. These are really nice, I've got to say. I lost my phone. There's another one. Okay. We will move here. I'm going to part it just like they did with the perm rods, comb it out, and curl it. And I count 1, 100, 2, 100, 3, 100, 4, 100, 5, 100, 100. I tried to keep it for about 30 seconds. You need to test your curling iron, but most of the curling irons I've been using, and I watch the clock, literally, so I don't burn the hair. I test it, and if it needs to be tighter, I keep it on there longer. You can recurl it. I think it's about 30 seconds. It might be less, but
this. It's very, very soft mohair. There you go. See, by just keeping it on a little longer. Depending on your curling iron depends on the size of your curls, just like in your own. But this curling iron made of something different and the hair doesn't seem to stick since I don't have my clock I'm just trying to estimate If you end up getting something like this, we've done three curls here. Let's do the soft curls in the forehead. Here again, we would go down. The beauty about having something this soft is you can pull it back and put a brett here or you can put uh, a bow it makes it soft. You can take these curls, divide them, and here again, working backwards. It depends on the look you're wanting. Do you want a tight look? you want a soft look? That is basically what you're going to do. These would have to sit overnight. Um, I've never tried and had success trying to hurry them and put them under a hair dryer and 
it really doesn't work to put them in a microwave. Some people have tried it. So with that, you can get downloads if you need more information from the Doll Artisan Guild. These are just three of the downloads for wig making. One was how to make a wig cap using a buckram, buckram for wig caps, making a mohair wig, and this is an upswip root wig for upswip. So with that, I hope you can go ahead and try making a wig and style your wig and do whatever you want to do with it. Linda, this was so good. Well, thank you. <laughs> Wasn't that wonderful, everybody? It was so good. I learned so much and we learned how to style and we just, we learned so much from you. I'm just, every t every single time, I don't, I'm just in awe. Oh, well, good. So thank you so much. You're Linda's website, everybody, is Uniquely Yours Porcelain Dolls. She has online seminars. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what, are, what do you have coming up uh, later on this year? Mainly it's the portrait chameau, mm -hmm. and I'm teaching the painting, plus I'm teaching a virtual, people can take virtually the costuming too. Right. So um, I give videos and they can upload them and they can watch them. I provide the kit, it's all, just depends if you want to sew or if you want to make a doll or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Play. You like. can learn from Linda, so check out that there's a link in in the video in the in the about of this video to Linda's website. And uh, thank you so much, Linda. We can't wait to see you at uh, on the next convention okay. and also on our live videos here at the shop. You just slay all day for us. Okay, thank you. All right, bye everybody. Bye bye.